Today, we're gonna to talk about React versus Angular. And this is not a flame war. Let's be sensible and let's choose the right tool for the job. This is what will help you have a successful project, not choosing a particular tool. If you enjoy talking about open source, tech events, hackathons, conferences, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm really interested in learning more about what you do and how I can help you. My name is Eddie, I've got 15 years experience in the tech industry. I'm still learning. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the pros and cons of using a library versus a framework. The amount of people I meet, be it at a tech interview that I'm doing for somebody, or a hackathon, or a conference tech event, and they start the conversation or end the conversation with, oh, and it was in React. And I think, but what does that, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't guarantee you're gonna be successful. A lot of people think, by saying it's gonna be in React because it's a buzzword at the moment that it means they're gonna get the job or it's gonna be successful. And the amount of people that call themselves a React developer, they should just be a developer, full stack, front end, back end, JavaScript, but calling yourself a React developer, you're really pigeonholing yourself. I don't think it helps your career. I don't think it helps you sell yourself by saying you're a React developer. Would you hire a builder to build your house if they said, I'm a hammer builder? No, a builder needs to use a hammer, a screwdriver, and many other tools, just like we do as developers. So why do so many people call themselves a React developer? I think it's because it's a buzzword. I do think they can do more than just React, but because it's a buzzword, I think they're trying to maybe come up more in searches, stand out a bit more. And I do understand it's a saturated market and we do want to stand out more. But by calling yourself a React developer, I don't think it works well. When I see that on a CV or LinkedIn for someone I'm interviewing, I think it works against them because then I think, well, what about the other stuff that we need to use? The automated testing, be it front and a back end, or the other important skills that we have to have, the communication skills. Yeah, I don't think having React in your profile for Twitter, for on your CV, or when you meet someone, I don't think it does you any benefit. Let's talk about the framework versus the library. So we all know that React is a library and Angular is a framework. And there are places for both, so I'm not saying one is better than the other. They are different tools and they solve a similar problem in a different way. So React being a library, it's smaller, there is less to learn, there's less to it. That's a positive. The downside is you'll need, they need to pick other third-party libraries to build the project. Positive with that, there's more flexibility. The negative is those third-party libraries might not always be kept up to date, so it holds your project back a little bit. They might not be kept maintained. I might pick a different third-party library to you, whereas someone else might pick a third-party library. So onboarding more people becomes, maybe takes longer, more difficult, because you might be using a different third-party library that they're used to. Whereas a framework, there's a lot more to learn but it has everything in there. And most of the time, let's be honest, you need these extra components or libraries. So if they're part of the framework and then they're official, then they're gonna be kept up to date. They're gonna be continuously maintained. They're gonna complement the main tool that you're using. So it all kind of works seamlessly together. They usually have a convention of how to do things. Yes, you can customize it further. There's always this option, but at least as a starting point, you have a good way to do it. And when you onboard new, new people to the team, they know how to pick it up because they've used it before as a standard practice. So I believe if you're doing a prototype or a small project, you can use React. It's quick, it's fast. If it's a hackathon, then great. But I think if it's a bigger project where you're gonna onboard more people over time, you need lots more functionality, then a framework, something like Angular, is probably better for that situation. So you need to choose the right tool for the job. You don't need to learn Angular all in one go. You can learn each section as you need it. As you need something, then you can go look at the docs. I think like with technology in general, it's really important to be aware of many things, but be an expert at some. So be aware of those other libraries and components that Angular provides. And then when you need them, then you can look into using them, things like pipes and those sorts of things. My recommendation, do your research. Don't get excited by buzzwords, because what's a buzzword today won't be a buzzword tomorrow. 
especially in the tech industry, go out of fashion fairly quickly. So at the moment, things seem pretty stable, which is great, but this could change at any moment. So make sure you're also familiar with other tools and don't just focus on one. Try to understand the vanilla languages or the design patterns behind them. So with most frameworks, they're like MVC, Model View Controller, or with the JavaScript ones more, MVVM. I think it's important to understand that, understand how the adapter pattern works. There are so many great videos and tutorials out there on that. If you would like me to do any, leave a comment below and let me know. But understanding those patterns then can be applied to other frameworks, other libraries, other technologies and other languages. So don't think your project's gonna be successful because you're using a specific technology. Some technologies are better for the problem you're trying to solve, but doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be successful. Leave a comment below and let me know what your thoughts are on the situation. It's a really hot topic. Let's not start a flame war. Let's be pragmatic and let's understand the right tool for the job. And what is the job? What other examples of projects have you got that certain tools have solved those for you?